Greetings and welcome to another edition of 15 Minutes of Flame. I am Robert Phoenix, and you are you, being the best you that you can be in this very moment, no doubt. Well, it is another day on the world stage as we lurch towards Bethlehem. That's right. Actually, it's probably Babylon. Uh, The November 8th date of the election. And every day, the plot thickens and gets deeper and deeper and deeper. Veritas just released the third video in their series. And yes, it is damning. Is it as damning as the first one? Time will tell. But what's really amazing here is that the uh, Republican uh, National Committee, the people that are supposedly the counter insurgency or the opposition to the Democrats aren't even talking about these videos. Nobody inside the party is coming forward and pushing the narrative. Now they're more than willing to push the narrative against Donald Trump, whether it's Jason Chaffetz or part of the Mormon mafia. But when it comes to unraveling the behind the scenes guerrilla warfare and tactics, and clearly violations of campaign, not only ethics, but laws, they're nowhere to be seen, nowhere to be heard, nowhere to be found. A-W-O-L, M-I-A, whatever you want to use to describe their non-action or inactivity, fascinating stuff. Plausibility by denial is what we're really talking about here. So in the latest video, the latest Veritas video, this is, this is where it, we're going out into the realm of the surreal now. This is where it starts to get surreal because we're, in, we're invoking cartoon characters. We're bringing in the animated universe into this discussion because there was a strategy to employ Donald Ducks with Trump hair on them to bring about this idea and this, this meme in real time at the events that Trump is ducking his taxes. And based on the video and what you're able to see, it's clear that the idea comes from Hillary Clinton. And there's not supposed to be any kind of communication, commiseration, planning between the uh, DNC, the super PACs, Democracy Partners, and America for Change. Democracy Partners in America for Change are just down the, the pyramid. So it starts with Hillary Clinton at the top of the pyramid. Let's do a flow chart here. Hillary Clinton is at the top. Below her, below her is the DNC. Below that are the super PACs. Actually, it's probably going to go Hillary, super PAC, DNC. From the DNC, it goes to Democracy Partners, Democracy Partners, America for Change. The super PACs are the money that are fueling all of this. And then the decision, the decision making, but maybe the super PACs are even above Hillary Clinton. Let's revise it. It's going to go super PACs because it's the super PACs that Hillary Clinton is going to listen to and carry out her unspoken campaign promises and back deals, backroom deals. So super PAC, Hillary Clinton, uh, Democratic National Committee, uh, Democracy Partners, American, Americans for Change. There it is. There is your pyramid, your food group pyramid. The apex predators at the top are the super PACs. Okay, so now that we've established that, it comes down from Hillary that they want to do this duck thing because they originally wanted to have Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam walking around the uh, Trump events, pay your taxes. Uncle Sam says to reveal your tax returns. But then Hillary really loved the duck idea. Then they have to go through this whole licensing thing with Walt Disney that they don't want to have even violate the trademark. They're paying a lot of money for the ducks because they really, 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 really want the duck to look like Donald Duck. That's how specific they are. So it so the duck idea gets talked about from Bob Creamer through Scott Hoval, through the various chains of command, Democracy Partners, Americans for Change. They ran on it. <clears throat> and so they deploy the ducks. And uh, they deploy the ducks, and Scott Foval uh, had uh, cell phones loaded with duck calls so that they could go off at a certain time at a Pence rally, 
and get noticed. Uh, he was really hoping that uh, the ducks, one of the ducks would get beaten up because that's what they want to do. They want to provoke. These people are basically uh, masochists. They should call themselves masochists for change because they're willing to take abuse. They're willing to get spat on, beat up, uh, to provoke the Trump supporters, to go to blows with them. They're, that this is their plan. This is their strategy. Masochists for change. So this latest video, it's pretty clear, pretty clear, Donna Brazil from Hillary to Bob Creamer and then to uh, Scott Hoval and then the ducks are on the ground. And then what's really fascinating is that if you, if you could follow the links through the Project Veritas video, the, uh, the official one that's on YouTube, I think you can go to uh, Zero Hedge or Breitbart, find the video, or just go on to uh, Project Veritas on YouTube. There's some interesting links, and there's a, a woman who posted a photo of one of the ducks that was being uh, photographed, and then, and then it was in a piece on Huffington Post. The person who got the credit for the photo was Zulima Rodriguez, who's one of the key agitators and one of the stars of the first video, Project Veritas One. I mean, these people are stupid. I, I mean, why, why would she use her name as a credit for the photo? Why couldn't she be somebody else? Does she have to let, have so much vanity involved in her uh, insertion of a duck photo on HuffPo? And what does that mean about HuffPo? Are they in on this too? Of course they are. Of course they are. They're getting money. They're getting paid. This is what happens. And then there's other photos. There's a photo of a duck with Aaron Black. Aaron Black, of course, being the dark, dark, dark henchman. The guy who is like so dark and so black that he changed his last name to be Aaron Black. And he's there. He's being photographed. He's not that dark. He's not that black. He's not that mysterious. He's being photographed with the duck. And then there's another photo with Scott Fovel next to the duck. In Iowa, uh, Fovel actually uh, claims that uh, as the duck, in the duck suit, he was nearly beaten up. I bet he loved that. I bet Scott Fovel just loved that. These people are insane. They're, they're totally insane. And they're willing to do anything to get Hillary Clinton elected. On some level, you have to admire the commitment. The commitment is admirable. That they're willing to cross all these lines. And this is nothing new, people. This has gone on for years. Years. I mean, our last president, or our current president, came out of the same cesspool that Hillary Clinton has emerged from, which is Chicago. Remember, I told you these are Chicago gangland-style tactics that have come down from Al Capone. We are in the month of Scorpio, and in the month of Scorpio, we are in the time of Revelation. We're at a time of revelation going from the dark to the light, which is the nature of Scorpio. We must go down into the belly of the beast and emerge. This is very much like uh, Jonah and the whale, right? In the belly of the beast. The belly of the beast is very endemic of Scorpio. And Jonah's down there and he comes out and he surfaces and he comes through that Piscean medium, which is the ocean. And he, and he emerges and he comes out for breath and light, clarity. It's a metaphor. It's a metaphor for your life. When you're in the belly of the beast, remember, you can't emerge from it. But it takes a couple of things in order to do it. It takes some faith. It takes a lot of faith. And it takes a little bit of ingenuity. you got to know what, what to do when you're in that, in that whale gullet, right? When you're down, when you're down in, that, in the belly of the beast. Although the whale is probably back then you know, very fierce. Here's a creature. They don't understand whales. We'd have to change it now, sort of in the belly of the dragon. That's where you are now. You're in the belly of the dragon. So we're in Scorpio. It's going to come out. It's going to come up. It, now, it, now, here's where it can get tricky. Because if Hillary Clinton looks like she's going to lose, and everything they do, everything they do to discredit Donald Trump seems like it backfires on them totally backfires on them and he tends to get stronger 
while they get weaker. Isn't that interesting? So what's going to happen is at some point, if she feels as though she is going to lose the election, and the, the and they're scared. I can tell you right now, they are scared. Because they are seeing that their poll numbers are down and that Trump's numbers are up. So if they are going, if they are going to lose this election and it feels like they're headed in that direction, they are going to go full nuclear, scorched earth. They're going to bring up the the uh, the Trump Pado, the Trump Pado Islands, uh, and uh, the uh, the Epstein material. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And if that happens, then Trump will take Clinton and everybody else down with him. And we we will be living in a scorched earth political environment. And of course, the one who this really um, would favor is Barack Obama. Out of all else, right? Everybody else, Barack Obama. So I want to I want to read a little poem here before we take off. And the 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 impetus or my my inspiration for reading the poem comes from a a Christian tradition where the Lord works in mysterious ways. And sometimes the people that get chosen to carry out a certain task or a certain mission are not always considered best of breed. And and, And in some ways, it's important to wrap our heads around this. Because therein lies the act of redemption. And I think Donald Trump is starting to fit into this category. So what I wanted to do here really quickly is I I wanted to read you um, a poem. And it's a poem by George Herbert, who happens to be one of my my favorite uh, poets. He's one of the metaphysical poets. I hope I can just had it up here. Let's see what we got here. Hold on. I have so many windows open at my... Not a long poem. Hold on. We don't want that. We don't want that. Let's see. No. George Herbert is a metaphysical poet. And I'm going to have to find this poem again. And we only have 90 seconds. I'll tell you what. Let me read this poem tomorrow. Because we only have 15 minutes of flame. Hold on. I may be able to find it. Hold on. Hold on. Redemption, George Herbert Redemption. Okay, I think I found it because I am facile and I'm guided. I am guided by Mercury. Here we go, waiting for the click. The name of the poem is Redemption and it's by George Herbert, a metaphysical poet. And this is about the process of redemption. Having been a tenant long to a rich Lord, not thriving, I resolved to be bold. I make a suit unto him to afford a new small rented lease and cancel the old. In heaven at his manor, I him sought. They told me there that he was lately gone about some land which he had dearly bought. Long since on earth to take possession, I straight returned in knowing his great birth, sought him accordingly in great resorts in cities, theaters, gardens, parks, and courts, At length I heard a ragged noise and mirth of thieves and murderers. There him I espied, who straight your suit is granted, said and died. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can seem intense. Like breakup R and B intense. I thought you said you love the sweater that I got you. If you didn't, you could have told me. Geico makes it easy. 
Just go to geico.com anytime to update or check your policy without all the extra drama. I even had a gift receipt. Jimmy John's America's number one sandwich delivery fast at speaking. I'm on my way. I'm in the backyard here, Ed. <laughs> Wow, you are fast. Yes, sir. Freaky fast and freaky good. But I got to say, I've never delivered to a dude in a doghouse. Well, I'm definitely in the doghouse. I thought in the doghouse was just an expression, a figure of speech. Well, the doghouse is a very real place. How long are you condemned to your canine quarters? Too soon to tell, but on the bright side. The doghouse has a bright side. Yeah, the wife can't throw a lap this far. Oh, I guess she's been working out. Order Jimmy John's sandwich delivery today. Jimmy John's. Freaky fast. Freaky fresh.